Hello, and welcome to episode 620 of Photo Kitchen. I'm your humble host, MD Welch, and today I share with you my three favorite features in the newest release or update to Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now, this is for the summer-spring release in 2024. It seems that Adobe is doing two releases or two updates now, uh, one in the spring and one in the fall. So this is for spring or summer of 2024, depending on when you're listening to this. Now, I'm not going to go over every new feature inside of this uh, because I want to share with you my three favorite features uh, inside of this program. And the first one is actually not a new feature at all, but it's new support. Uh, if you followed the channel and hopefully by the end of this video, or maybe even by this particular point, you've hit the subscribe button, you may know that I shoot Sony cameras. I've also shot Canon and Nikon, but Sony cameras have not had tethered capture support inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. This is a reason why I primarily use Capture One because I can shoot tethered into that program. Program. But now in this latest release, if I go to file, I go to tethered capture and I start tethered capture, I could have Sony support. So we'll just call this Sony test. And then um, we'll go ahead and update some of these things. I was playing around a little bit earlier, but there we go. Uh, set my sequence number. So all of these features are not new. If you've been shooting Canon or Nikon, relatively straightforward here. You have your locations, you have your ability to do meta uh, information as far as meta uh, templates, keywords here as well. I'll go ahead and hit OK, and then it will go ahead and open up. And for the first time as a Sony shooter, I now have the tethered bar actually to displaying my camera's information. So you can see that I'm shooting a A7R Mark IV, uh, A as an alpha. Uh, it gives me my shutter speed, my aperture, my ISO, gives me my daylight, and of course my ability to set my uh, develop settings uh, as I want to, same as previous, and I could also apply a preset here. One also nice feature, and I will say, as a Capture One shooter, this doesn't seem to work nearly as well. I have to find a workaround. There is live support. So I could come into here, get a little uh, shot of Deadpool as Bob Ross on my computer desk here. Let me just turn live off so we don't have this issue. And I go ahead and get that tethered uh, shot here. Of course, it's out of focus. So let's do that correct. There we go. There's another shot. But I now have tethered support inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. Uh, yay, that works really well. It is a little bit slower than I would say some other programs, but uh, it's pretty good, especially if you're only shooting Adobe Lightroom Classic. Sorry for the muffled voice as I am shooting and trying to talk at the exact same time. Uh, this could also be because of the cable that I'm using. I just grabbed a quick, uh, basically USB-C cable. I don't have anything fancy running in here, but there is tethered support now for Sony cameras. So if you're shooting Sony, rejoice, you have it now. And uh, dear Adobe, I'll stop writing you letters and complaining. The next two features are both found in the develop module, as most of these major updates always stress the develop module features here. But the first big one is lens blur. Now, lens blur was a beta uh, feature up until this most recent release. And I usually don't talk about beta features until Adobe's ironed out the specifics of the actual uh, software because things change and I don't wanna have that kind of information out there. But lens blur is a really nice, fantastic feature in addition to Adobe Lightroom classic. And if you've avoided it like I have because it was a beta feature, it's now solid. It's now part of the program. It's relatively straightforward. Click the checkbox for apply. You have your blur amount here so you could reduce that or increase that. This image already had a pretty significant amount of depth of field or shallow depth of field. So I don't have to add a whole bunch of lens blur, but of course I could increase that. You can choose the type of bokeh or bokeh, uh, depending on how you want to pronounce that. So you could choose how you're out of focus little rings or dots start to appear inside of the image, which is a nice feature if you want to work with that. And then you could actually boost that as well. Maybe my favorite feature of this, though, is the ability to see the actual depth of the image and create a realistic blur. One problem with blurring just a simple subject inside a program, say like Adobe Photoshop for years, has been that there's never been a realistic fall off of that lens blur. Here we have the subject already selected using AI part of lens blur. I didn't have to make a selection before this. Very nice feature. And everything in yellow is in focus. It's tack sharp. Everything that's in orange going towards purple towards black is starting to fall off in focus. And you have this little focus range map here, and you can increase how deep that focus goes, essentially increasing your depth of field. And you could either visualize this with color or you could turn this off and you could just visualize it 
in the actual image itself. But it's very straightforward. It's very easy to use. Uh, you can also use a brush to basically paint in areas maybe that didn't meet the actual uh, requirements of your selection using lens blur. But overall, because of how good AI is in Adobe Lightroom Classic, this is a very nice feature and it's very simple to use. And again, it's no longer a beta feature. Now I've turned off lens blur because the next feature I wanna be able to concentrate on, and that is generative fill using the adjustment brushes or the retouching tools inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. To see this, I'm gonna come up to the many little toolbar, click on the icon in the middle, that will open up my brushes here. And this traditionally was the remove tool, the healing brush tool, and the clone stamp tool. And it still is the remove tool, uh, but it now has a whole bunch of new features. Now, if you're brand new to Adobe Lightroom Classic or you've just started playing around with it, essentially the workflow is pretty straightforward. Start with the brush or the tool on the left-hand side, which is remove, then heal, and then clone. Basically, it's it gets easier when you start off on the left-hand side and you get more precise on the right-hand side, but you need to do a little bit more work. But with generative AI or generative fill, you have a lot of interesting options or features here. Now, you can do the good old-fashioned object aware if you want to as well, but I have found that generative AI is pretty good. Now, I'm I personally have always really enjoyed this image of my friend Bridget that I shot on kind of a quasi uh, empty road, but I've never liked the signage in the background. And it's just one of those things that's way too difficult to take out inside of Lightroom. It's always created a lot of issues and I would have to do this work inside of Photoshop. But now with generative AI, I'm just gonna come in and I'm just gonna paint over the area that I wish to remove. Now, when I do this, I'm making a selection. I'm not doing anything different than I've done before with any of these other retouching tools, but I will get a highlight here and I'll have my uh, mask uh, refinement here. I could add or subtract to that as I need. I'm okay with that. I could change the size of the brush. I'll go ahead and say apply. I'm gonna get a generative remove from here. Now, you do need to be connected to the internet uh, to have this work. So this is a cloud-based system, but it's very nice because now what you get is you get your generative AI and I could come into here and I actually have some variations down at the bottom. I could hit this little arrow and toggle through some options that maybe AI is gonna give to me. So I could continue on with that tree or maybe do a different with the fence. But nevertheless, a little quick uh, painting with this tool results in a huge amount of change inside the image. I've never liked this building complex in the background. So let's try to remove all of this. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna remove the sign. I'm gonna remove this little fence post here. Come in, maybe get rid of this light in the background. Paint this in. And of course, with everything in any tool, your painting or your selection or your mask work is always gonna be key to this. We'll try and see what happens there. We'll go ahead and come back into mask refinement. We like that, we'll go ahead and hit apply. Again, we'll get a generative remove. We'll wait for that to go ahead and finish up. There we go. And I have to say, that's not too bad. I could go through the arrows here and that's maybe even a little bit better. I think I actually like option two here. So I'll go ahead and hit close. And now you can see, if I do a little quick before and after, you can see my development here, but you can see how those two visual things in the background have now been removed. Add in a little bit of lens blur there, they really fall off. But generative AI is a very fascinating technology. It's very easy to use, and it's gonna save you a lot of time and also not require you to go into Photoshop for fixes like this. I don't need to go into Photoshop now if I wanted to fix these particular types of features. So these are my three favorite features inside of Adobe Lightroom classic for spring of 2024 release. I would love to hear about what your favorite features are in the comment section down below. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit like, subscribe to the channel, please share this with your friends. And until next time, I'm MD Welch wishing you all the best from Photo Kitchen.